Tom Mills here and we're on location at the Green Home TV Home Edition project. We're here with Archie. Welcome Archie. Thank you. Archie Duker with uh, Fast Form Concrete Forms. We chose to use insulated concrete forms or ICF in the Home Edition project. Archie, it's a great product. Um, maybe you can tell us a bit about ICF, um, what it does structurally and thermally and all the great things about it. Certainly, I'd be glad to. Um, I'm a distributor as uh, Tom mentioned of Insulated Concrete Farms. The brand I handle is called Nujira, but they're, most of the insulated farm brands on the market are very similar in terms of how they perform and what they can do for you. Almost all ICFs that you see on the market have four primary features. They have two layers of expanded polystyrene foam, one on each side, and between those layers, they fill the foam with concrete. That concrete becomes the structural portion of your wall. Most ICFs also have a system built into them so that you can attach your drywall or whatever finishes you might have on the outside of the house. On our forms, you see that there is a diamond shaped pattern every eight inches. That basically indicates where that stud is in the wall. So basically in one step, we're uh, forming a wall, we're framing it, we're doing the insulation for the wall, we're providing the vapor barrier and the exterior air barrier all in one step. I mean, when we were first looking at the product and we noticed all those features, I mean, what that all said to us was it was gonna go up quick. Absolutely. Typically on a custom home, we'll reduce the construction time by about three weeks. Commercial projects, we've done a lot of multi-story buildings uh, and that sort of thing. Our speed is unbeatable. And that's one of the primary reasons that commercial contractors like this type of product. Mm -hmm. The uh, polystyrene, I believe it's extruded polystyrene, is that correct? No, this, no. Is, this is expanded and there's a difference between the two. And the main differences that are important to the homeowner is that expanded polystyrene does not have any off-gassing, whereas extruded polystyrene does have off-gassing and actually loses our value over time. Hmm. Okay, so this stuff doesn't have any off-gassing? Absolutely not. Very good. So then, the form aspect of it then, this is our insulation That's in this correct. process. And roughly, what's the, the R value of either side of this? We rate the whole form as 22.4, and that does not take into consideration the R value of the concrete, which is very minimal. But uh, to obtain the same performance in a bat insulated wall uh, as you do with this wall, you would need between R40 and R50 in bad insulation and right. the same heat loss. Right. I know oftentimes um, in some of the marketing materials, uh, they would say, you know, uh, you know, acts like a R40 wall, that kind of idea. And so that's what you're making reference to. Is yes, it really isn't an R40 wall, but in terms of your heat loss, and the performance. Uh, it would perform that way. Correct. Hmm, okay. And of course, I've noticed here that, that these things fold. Yes, that's a unique uh, feature of this particular farm. And, uh, and the main advantage of that feature is that we can ship a lot more product uh, more economically and, and nowadays when we do, for example, LEED certified buildings, uh, they actually calculate how much fuel you use to mm -hmm. bring the product from the manufacturing plant to the job site. So obviously if we can get 50% more product in the truck, we're using less fuel per square foot. Most of your building components would be these eight foot sections and then corner pieces. Correct. And I believe we've got a corner piece, corner piece here. So yeah, so these, this is a 90 degree corner. We also have 45 degree corners. Uh, if you're doing other angles, you can do any angle, but then they're just field cut on site. Right. Uh, these forms, you notice there's a long leg and a short leg. And uh, because this particular form is reversible, on one course, you're gonna have the blocks sitting this way. The next course above it, we simply flip it over and now we have the, have the opposite leg. I mean, hmm. To create that overlap that we need. Yes. If I remember correctly, that was a unique feature of the new Dura product. That's was correct. That flippability. Yeah. Yes, uh, that uh, again makes it more, uh, I guess, environmentally friendly in terms of we have a lot less waste than competitors' products just because uh, we can cut our block in half, we can flip them over with no waste. Mm -hmm. So we've talked a bit about the fact that we've got concrete in the middle here between these two pieces of insulation. Now, I know when we were looking at different building techniques, they talked about the principle of thermal mass. Some mass that can heat up. 
Does that, is that part of the principle of this as well? Yes, it is. And uh, I think the easiest way to explain how thermal mass works, if uh, we were to imagine that you are outside the building, I'm inside the building, and right now, and of course this is full of concrete in this wall, uh, right now the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius both inside and outside. Uh, and then as night comes, the sun goes down, it cools down outside. In your, if you're living in a conventional home now, as you're standing inside this home within an hour or so of the sun going down, you'll feel it getting colder in the home. But what happens with an ICF wall is that the cold now has to penetrate the insulation on the outside, work its way through and cool down all that concrete in the wall, then penetrate the insulation on the inside before it affects the occupant inside the building. And that generally takes several days. So, uh, of course, the next morning the sun comes up and the cycle repeats. Mm -hmm. So that's where you get your thermal mass is that the concrete then becomes a moderate uh, neutral temperature, you might say, that uh, is sort of halfway between the inside and outside temperature and it prevents the temperature from changing easily inside the home. Mm -hmm. And so that then has a moderating effect from, you might go from a, a cold, colder day to a hotter day. On that hotter day, uh, it's gonna take a long time for that heat to be absorbed all the way through this. That's correct. Not just the R value, but it has to warm up that concrete as well as it goes through. That's right. About 25% of your heat loss in a typical frame home with bad insulation is air infiltration or air leakage to the wall. That concrete, of course, is airtight and it prevents any air leakage to the wall. So uh, that again adds a substantial amount of performance in terms of heat loss. We've had a number of comments uh, with, with this project here where people have come inside and there's no drafts. And it's like a surprise. Normally a house under construction is a little drafty, you know, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, what you typically find in an ICF building is that the temperature is very stable. It doesn't climb up and down. It's generally within one degree Celsius or so all the time and that makes for a more comfortable environment. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, another feature then of the ICF, again, referring to this concrete in the middle, is not just that it's going to uh, control the air infiltration, but there's just a real sound barrier that comes involved in this as well. Yes, that's right. Uh, in fact, when uh, we have polled people who already live in ICF homes as to what uh, they like about it the most, what came up as number one, is the how quiet the homes are. Uh, even in here, you can see how quiet it is in here right now. Well, there's quite a wind blowing outside right now that uh, if you were standing outside, you'd hear that. Mm -hmm. You don't hear a thing inside. Uh, so that's uh, a feature that people really love about the ICF. Mm -hmm. So just to review a bit then, um, structurally, it goes up quickly. Um, it's a solid house, uh, and that was certainly a, a feature for ourselves when we were considering wood. Yeah, you know, it can rot, it can get eaten up, so forth. Nothing's going to eat this thing. Um, the R value, that's just the sheer R value in terms of the insulation. The air infiltration and all that just making a very tight house. And then this whole sound control feature. And again, I mean, we're fairly rural. Um, you're right about the wind and so forth. But as a, as a, as a more urban product, uh, to not hear the traffic outside, to not hear the neighbors, etc. It's a great feature. So are there some features that, uh, that, that are specific to the new Dura product? We talked a bit about this foldability and how that can, can save space and transportation, but what are some other uh, features of, the, of specifically the new Dura product? Uh, yes, as you mentioned, the foldability is something that uh, is sort of the wow factor in New Jera because people think that's pretty cool. But, uh, but we have some other features that uh, their prime purpose is to make New Jera the easiest product to install on the market and also the fastest. Uh, the number one feature, of course, is it's reversible. There's no top or bottom. And uh, I can show you easier with a corner form is how critical that is because our competitor's product need a left corner and a right corner. We only need one because we can just turn it over and it'll always work no matter what you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. One of the other uh, unique features that Nijera has is that our form is the only one that actually has a mechanical connection that connects this plastic web inside the form to the web on the next form. And uh, so that when we stack our forms, there's actually a lock so that now they're both connected. The, I'm gonna pull that apart. The competitors' farms, they count on the friction of these knobs, as we call them, uh, 
two hold the forms together, but of course that friction doesn't give you much holding power. It can pull apart real easily. Where it's important is that when you start to pour concrete inside this wall, what's going to happen is the concrete's going to try and make these forms float apart. And uh, because of that, the competitor's products, they have to wire tie between these webs to hold them forms together. We've totally eliminated that labor issue in wire tying mm -hmm. them together. So it gives us a better, uh, a better quality wall in the mm -hmm. end because we know that it's going to stay where it's supposed to stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, separation can be a real issue when that concrete starts pounding in there. So uh, yeah, we've come outside here and uh, the outside of the structure, we've been talking a lot about the features. And one of the features of this product is, of course, that we can use it from the foundation right to the very top of the roof. That's correct. Uh, traditionally, people have always thought of concrete as being a product that you'd use just for the foundation only. And that's the way this product started back uh, when I first started in this industry back in 1994. Uh, it was nearly all basements. But now, uh, as time has progressed, people have started doing the entire home. And really, that's where most of the benefits are. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, the ground is a fairly constant temperature all the time. Where above grade, that's where you get hot in the summer, cold in the winter, winds, noise, fire, all those hazards that you might want to protect yourself from can be solved by using an ICF above grade. So some real advantages then to using this product from the foundation, from the footings right to the roof. So just a quick review. Quick building, um, high insulation value, sound control, uh, air control. You can use the product right from the very footings right to the very top. It, it's a great product and, and we've appreciated using it. Oh, well, I'm glad you did. I'm sure that once you moved in, you'll appreciate it even more. Great. Thank you, Archie. You're welcome. <laughs>